Greetings, physics students, and welcome back. Today we're going to look at lenses. A lens is a curved prism that refracts light, just like you can see in that diagram there. Applications of lenses include contacts, glasses, microscopes, telescopes, and cameras. Lenses follow spherical curvature, just like we saw with mirrors, with a radius of curvature, capital R. There are two types of lenses. There are convex, which are converging lenses, and concave, which are diverging lenses. We should be aware that the focal point is once again where the rays converge to or diverge from, and the focal length once again is defined as F equals one half R. So these are the considerations that we want to bring with us as we investigate lenses. So let's get started. We're going to start with the first kind of lens, which is a convex or a converging lens. We're going to start with ray tracing, just like we saw with mirrors. And we want to be aware of three rays. You only need to draw two to find the image, but it's important to be able to draw all three. So the P ray aims parallel. So we can see there that uh, we have a P ray here, which aims parallel to the principal axis. Remember, the principal axis is that horizontal line on which the objects in the image um, are found passing right through the middle of the um, lens. So we aim parallel to the principal axis, so that's the P ray right here, and that's going to go ahead and refract through the opposite focus. Now when you draw these diagrams, you should really use a straight edge or a ruler. I don't want to scratch my screen, so I'm going to draw this freehand, but I'm hoping that those of you at home are using a straight edge or a ruler to draw your, your rays here. The M ray is going to aim at the middle of the lens. And this is the easiest one to draw because all it does is it passes straight through the middle of the lens. Now you might remember when we looked at refraction, we saw that if the two surfaces of a prism were parallel, there is no angle of deflection of that ray through the prism. And what we have here are actually two parallel surfaces. If you look closely at the surface where the M ray passes through, this surface right here is always going to be parallel to that surface over there. And because those surfaces are parallel, there is no deflection of that ray, so it goes right through, and there you see the M ray um, passing right through the lens. The F ray is going to aim at the nearest focus, as you see the F ray here in green, aiming at the nearest focus, hitting the lens, and then refracting such that it is parallel to the principal axis. And you can see that all of these rays are going to converge over here where we see the image. So in red, we have this nice image here. And our goal is going to be not only to find this image and draw this image, but calculate where is the image located. So that's going to be this DI right there. And also, what is the height of the image? And that's going to be this H sub I that you see over here. And that'll be based on the magnification, which we're going to talk about in a second. And also, let me draw a little better I here, H sub I, and also based on the object height, which is H sub O over there. So our goal will be to draw these ray tracing diagrams and make the appropriate calculations. All right, so let's get started. Um, we first want to take a look at the lens equation. Now, because the geometry is very similar to the spherical mirror, the spherical lens will have a pretty much identical um, lens equation. So the lens equation is going to be 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i is going to equal 1 over f. All right, and this is an i here. And this is the exact same relationship that we saw when we looked at mirrors. Um, and if you were to ask yourself, what are these quantities? Remember that if this is our uh, lens, here I am drawing a rudimentary lens, and here is my principal axis, let's say in blue, right there. Um, the object distance will be the distance from the object, let's say the object is here, to the lens itself. So this will be d sub o. The focal length is the distance from the lens to the focal point. So if this is the focal point here, this will be the focal distance, f. And our goal is going to be to find where is the image located. And that's going to be the d sub i that we want to calculate here. All right. So please make sure you've got this equation circled and starred um, before you move forward. All right, so now that we've got the lens equation, it will be valuable for us to take a look at the magnification equation. Now magnification m 
is simply the ratio of the image height produced by the lens to the object height that is the source of the image. So for example, if we double in height, we're going to have a magnification of two. Um, you can use similar triangles to derive the following relationship, which is that HI over HO is equal to the ratio of the image distance to the object distance with a negative sign in front. And this here is the complete mirror, or rather the complete magnification equation that we want to use to in particular calculate the image height or the magnification. So please make sure you've got this equation circled and starred before we get going. And now we want to take a look at our very first example. So we're going to look at a convex or a converging lens. Notice that these, these words convex and converging both start with C-O-N-V, which is a nice way to remember, convex, converging. Um, and we're going to look at three cases. The first case is going to be the object is located behind the center of curvature. So let's draw our principal axis. And as you can see, I've already drawn my principal axis, this nice horizontal line. And I'm encouraging you at home to use uh, a, a ruler or a straight edge to draw that line. Then we're going to do our very best to draw a convex lens. So what I recommend is that you draw a curved line like this, and then maybe a flat spot on top, and then another curved line over here, and then a flat spot on the bottom. That's a pretty decent convex lens. And we're going to label the focal point in front of the lens, capital F, and the radius of curvature over here, capital R. And remember that the focal length, lowercase f, is always exactly one half the radius of curvature. So where is our image, or rather our object located? The object is located at 20 centimeters, which means if the focal length is eight centimeters, then the radius of curvature is 16 centimeters, and the object is located way out here beyond the radius of curvature at a distance, d sub o, of 20 centimeters. And the object height we're given here is three centimeters. So we're gonna write h sub o is three centimeters. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is draw the image. So let's do some ray tracing. Let's start with our M-ray. This is always the easiest one to draw. So with our straight edge, we're gonna draw a nice straight line from the top of our object through the middle of the lens to produce the M-ray. So here's our M-ray right there. As you can see, I missed the middle of the lens a little bit, but you can see that it's, it's pretty faithful to what you'd expect the M-ray to do. And then we wanna draw the P-ray, which is going to aim parallel to the uh, principal axis. Let me use green here for the P-ray. So we aim parallel, and then we're going to refract through the opposite focus. Now by symmetry, the opposite focus should be the same distance away from the uh, lens that the first focus was. So we're going to refract through the opposite focus, and that's going to take us somewhere over here. So if I drew that appropriately, this would be our P-ray. Now your diagram will be more accurate than mine because you're using a ruler um, to draw your rays. And now if I wanted to, I could draw the F-ray, which is gonna aim at the nearest focus. So we're gonna aim at the nearest, oops, no, aim at the nearest focus, hit the lens and then refract. And here we see um, the location of the convergence of all three rays right here at this point. So now what I want to do is I want to draw this uh, this image and label this H sub I and label the image distance um, D sub I. All right, so with ray tracing, we have successfully drawn the image. Now we can say a couple of things about this image. First of all, we can notice that it's upside down, which means the image is inverted. Okay, so be prepared for questions that ask you, is the image upright or inverted? You would say here that the image is inver inverted because the object was right side up and the image, as you can see, is upside down. So the image is in inverted and it's also a real image. Why do we say it's a real image? It's a real image. Let me write that word a little bit clearer. It's a real image because the light rays actually converge. So the rays actually converge. 
And that might seem pretty obvious to you, but be prepared for a few examples that we're going to look at where the, the light rays don't actually converge and that it will be not a real image, but rather a virtual image. But in this case, the rays actually converge, so that means it's a real image. All right, so now we're ready to move on to part B, which is to find the image location. And to that end, we're going to set up the lens equation 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i is going to be equal to 1 over the focal length. And if we make the substitution, 1 over 20 centimeters plus 1 over the unknown d sub i is equal to 1 over 8. And then we solve this for d sub i. Standard techniques will yield d sub i is equal to 13.3 centimeters, which looks pretty consistent with our diagram. We have d sub i now is 13.3 centimeters, which is shorter than d sub o. So we can actually see that's consistent with the diagram that we drew, um, which is great. So we have found the location of the image. Go us. All right, what was um, part c? Part c was to find the image height. So now we want to do is use the magnification equation. So if this was part B, this will be part C. And the magnification equation is M equals the ratio of the image height to the object height or negative um, DI over DO. So we're going to focus on this part of the equation over here and use that to solve for the image height. So if you solve for H sub I, you get negative um, HO times the ratio of di over do. So let's calculate, see what we get. So we get negative, the object height here is three centimeters. So negative three times the ratio of the image distance, which is 13.3 over the um, object distance of 20. And you can already tell that this image is going to be inverted because of the negative sign. Um, that will indicate the inversion of the image. And you can also tell that the image is going to be smaller in magnitude. 13.3 divided by 20 is less than 1. And if you multiply that by uh, 3, we're clearly going to get something less than 3. In fact, we get exactly 2. So the image height is going to be negative 2 centimeters. So the negative indicates, once again, that the image is inverted. And the two is the new height. And you can see that this is a smaller height than we had for the object height, which was three centimeters. Um, and if you look at the magnification here, the ratio of HI over HO, the image height was um, negative two uh, over the object height, which was three. So this is, we're talking about an image that is two thirds as big in, uh, in image height as it was in object height. So we see a magnification of negative two-thirds here. All right, so we're all set. Let's take a look at our next example, which is case two. Now we've got the, the exact same situation, the same focal length, um, the same height of the object, but now we're going to place this object between the center of curvature and the focal point. So once again, we're going to draw our lens. So this is uh, my best lens, not too bad there. Um, and we want to label the focal point once again. And the center of curvature somewhere over here. And here's the focal point on the other side and the center of curvature over there. And once again, this focal length is eight centimeters. So eight e or rather F equals eight centimeters. And we're going to place the object at 12 centimeters, which is uh, between the focal length of eight and the raised curvature of 16. So here is going to be our image, uh, or rather our uh, object height. So the object distance, d sub o, is going to be d sub o equals 12 centimeters here. And we have the same object height of 3 centimeters that we had before. OK, so let's do a little ray tracing to find the image. So let's start with an M ray, which is a ray that passes through the middle of the um, lens, as you see there. And then I want to take my straight edge and do a P ray. So the P ray is going to aim parallel, and it's going to refract through the uh, opposite focus. So here's my refraction through the opposite focus. Um, 
Okay, that looks that looks okay. Hopefully with your straight edges you do a better job than me. Um, and if I wanted to do the F ray, I would aim at the nearest focus, so just like that, and then refract parallel to the principal axis. And as you can see, all of my rays converge over here. And here I see my H sub I, my image height, and this distance here is going to be my uh, D sub I, my image distance. Okay, so now that we've got our image, we've drawn it using our um, ray tracing, um, we now want to find the image location. So once again, we're going to set up for part B, the mirror, or rather the uh, lens equation, 1 over uh, D sub O plus 1 over D sub I equals 1 over F. And so now the object distance is 12. So 1 over 12 plus 1 over D sub I, that's the unknown, equals 1 over 8. And if you solve this for D sub I using standard techniques, you're going to get 24 centimeters. Um, so if we look at the diagram, is that consistent? And as you can see, even though I didn't draw this to scale, and I, I'm not using a straight edge, so my lines aren't perfectly straight, you can see that D sub I is certainly very much bigger than D sub O was. And in fact, if you drew your diagram uh, more accurately than me, you should see that D sub I is exactly double um, D sub O. And so now we can um, move forward and find the image height. And to that end, we're going to use the mirror. Uh, I keep saying mirror. We are going to use the magnification equation. So that's going to be, give us M equals HI over HO. And so HI, once again, was uh, oh, yes. So HI over HO, which is equal to negative DI over DO. And um, we can use this, of course, to solve for um, HI. So this will allow us to set up the following equation. Uh, HI over uh, HO is going to be equal to negative D sub I over D sub O. And solving this for HI, we're going to get HI is equal to negative HO times the ratio of DI over DO. And when we substitute in, we're going to have HI equals negative. The height of the object was 3 centimeters as before. And we've got now D sub I over D sub O. Well, D sub I was 24 centimeters over D sub O was 12 centimeters. And the ratio there is 2. So the magnification is 2. And we expect to see an image height of negative 2 times 3 or negative 6 centimeters. And if we look at our diagram, is that consistent? If this was three centimeters in height, does it stand a reason that this could be six centimeters in height inverted? And the answer is, yeah, that's not too far off from the diagram that we drew. And of course, your diagrams at home should be even better than mine because you're using a ruler. Um, so we are in a very strong position here. We have the image height and we also have the magnification. So clearly here, um, this, ratio is the magnification and the magnification is 2 in this case. So the negative of course does mean that the image is inverted and the 6 is double the magnitude because the magnification is 2. All right, good stuff. We do have an opportunity to do one more example for the converging lens. So that is case three. Now we're going to put the object between the focal point and the lens. So if this here is the lens, and if this here is the focal point, what would happen if we put the object at a distance of, let's say, three centimeters from the lens? So if this focal length is eight centimeters, then what would happen if we put the object at a distance of three centimeters? So now here is the object at a distance of three centimeters. So now we're putting this object very, very close to the 
lens. And that's going to result in some very unique um, circumstances. So let's see what happens if we have a focal length of eight centimeters and we have an object distance of three centimeters. All right, so here is the opposite focus, which we may need. And let's start by drawing our rays. Now, the easiest one to draw will be the M ray. So if this is the middle of the lens here, you start at the top of your object and draw a ray straight through the middle of the lens. And this is your M ray right there. All right, the next thing that we want to do is draw, let's say, the, um, the P ray. So the P ray is going to aim parallel to the principal axis. So that'll be a nice horizontal line. And it's going to refract um, through the uh, opposite focus. So it's going to refract through like that. Now, as you can see, we are starting to see a problem because these two rays will never converge. And so we, we're a little bit concerned about the result here. Just to be safe, let's also draw a, um, an F-ray. So the F-ray is going to aim at the nearest focus. But as you can see, we can't draw a ray through the nearest focus. All we can do is draw a ray that is collinear with the nearest focus. So when I say collinear, what I'm referring to is this line here from the top of our object to the, the nearest focal point the collinear line has a ray that hits the lens and refracts parallel to the principal axis. This is actually the F ray right here. Now what you notice about all of these rays is that they appear to converge somewhere in front of this lens. So in orange here, I'm representing where it is that these rays seem to be or appear to be originating from. And that is where the image appears to be. So where all three of these rays converge, I'm going to draw this arrow here, which indicates the image. This is H sub I, the image height. Now you might be looking at this and saying, hey, the light rays don't actually converge there. And you know what? You're right. The light rays don't actually converge there. It's an illusion. It's an illusory, it's a virtual image. So we're gonna call this image, very important to, to note this, this is a virtual image. And it's virtual because the rays don't actually converge. So be on the lookout, once you're in the case three where the where the object is located between the focal point and the lens, now you do not expect a real image. You expect a virtual image, which means the light rays don't actually converge in space. However, if you're over here on the right side of this lens, you're actually going to see an image. It won't be a, a real image. It could be a virtual image, but that image is going to appear to be a larger version. Look, you can see that it's upright and it's larger than the original um, object. So if the object is here in green, that was our original object, then the image is here in blue. So we expect to see a taller image also upright. Okay, so that's what we expect to see um, in part B and part C. So let's take a look now at part B. Now that we've drawn our diagram and we've drawn the image, now let's find the image location. So we set up once again the lens equation 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F. The object distance in this case was 3 plus 1 over DI is equal to 1 over 8. And if you solve this equation for DI, you're going to get DI is equal to negative 4.8 centimeters. Now, the negative here is simply an indication that instead of being behind the lens, the image is in front of the lens, which is, of course, an indication of it being a virtual image. 
because it's not possible for the rays to converge in front of the lens. That's why we call this a virtual image. All right, so now what we want to do now that we found the image distance is maybe compare it to the object distance and see does it make sense. If the object distance was three centimeters from the um, lens, does it make sense that this image is 4.8 centimeters from the, from the lens? And yeah, it does make sense because it's further away, so the magnitude of the distance is going to be bigger than for the object. So that, that actually does make sense. Um, now in part C here, we want to solve for the image height. So what is the image height? And for that purpose, we use the magnification equation M equals HI over HO, which is negative DI over DO. And if we make the substitution here, uh, we see that HI is equal to negative HO times DI over DO. Or negative height of the object was 3. The image distance was 4.8, or rather negative 4.8, divided by the uh, object distance, which was 3 because the object is three centimeters from the lens. Now, if we solve this, the two negatives cancel, the threes cancel, and we get 4.8 centimeters. So, first of all, the 4.8 is certainly bigger than three. And the fact that it's positive means that it's upright. So is that consistent with our diagram? Do we see a bigger image that's upright? And the answer is yes. So that blue um, line right here for the image height, that is bigger in size and it's also upright. So that's exactly what we would expect from this equation. So here we have our image, um, image height of 4.8 centimeters. All right, so that concludes our work on converging or convex lenses. Let's take a look at concave or diverging lenses. So in a concave lens, as you see represented here, we once again have the same three rays, the P ray, the F ray, and the M ray. However, there are some differences. The F ray is going to aim at the opposite focus instead of at the nearest focus. So that's the first difference. So we aim that F ray at the opposite focus like you see here. So this green ray, the F ray, is aiming at the opposite focus and it's refracting parallel to the principal axis. The P ray, meanwhile, is going to travel parallel to the principal axis and then refract collinear with the nearest um, focus. So we're going to practice that, but you can see uh, how we we start our ray parallel and then refract such that we are par rather we're collinear with the nearest focus, and collinear of of course just means within the same line as the um, as the nearest focus. The other difference is that the focal length f is always negative for concave or diverging lenses. So f is going to be equal to negative one half of the radius of curvature. The reason for this is that instead of this um, focal length being um, behind the lens, we're now going to see this focus in front of the lens. So because the concavity has switched, we're now going to see the, the, the nearest focus in front of the lens, and that's going to be the basis of um, our, our focal length. The other reason that we see a negative focal length here is that it's going to allow us to keep the mirror equation and the, or no, not the mirror equation, the lens equation, which is the same equation, the lens equation and the magnification equation identical. So we won't have to change any of the math. All we do is we change the sign of the focal length in order to accommodate the concave and the diverging lens. All right, so now we're in good shape. Let's get to our first example. Um, so a concave or diverging lens can be drawn as follows. So start with the principal axis. Of course, use your straight edge to make that horizontal line for the principal axis. And then draw your best concave lens like this. 
So something like this. That was pretty poor. I can certainly do better, I think. Let's try again. So this will be our concave lens here. Whoop, whoop. Okay, not too bad. You get the idea. So this is our focal point in front of the lens. This will be our radius of curvature over here in front of the lens. And here's our focal point behind the lens and our radius of curvature behind the lens. Okay, so there are no special cases with this example. Um, all cases will essentially be the same. But here we start with a focal length of negative 8 centimeters. So we're going to say that um, this distance is 8 centimeters um, from the focal point to the focus. So both in front of and behind the lens. And by convention, like we said, this focal length is negative. Let's put an object at 14 centimeters. So if the radius of curvature is um, 2 times 8 is 16, then the object distance will put us about here um, between the radius of curvature and the focal point. So here is our object. Um, so here's our object height. And this is the object distance here. So DO. All right. And now what we want to do is do some ray tracing. So let's start with the M ray, always the easiest one to draw. So the M ray is going to go straight through the middle of the uh, concave lens. And we can label that the M ray. The P ray is going to aim parallel, but then it's going to refract collinear with the nearest focus. So this is the nearest focus here. So the, the P ray when it refracts collinear with the nearest focus, is going to refract like that. And now you can see why this is called the diverging lens, because these light rays are clearly diverging. And then another thing that we can say is that the F ray, if we wanted to draw it, is going to aim at the far focus. So I'll do this in purple. It's going to aim at the far focus and then refract parallel. And this would be the F ray here. Now, what you can see is that even though these rays diverge, they appear to all originate from a location in space. So if you trace the P ray back and trace the F ray back and trace the M ray back to a location in space, you find that they all appear to originate at this orange location right here. And this is actually H sub i. That's the image height right there. So even though these rays don't really converge, and therefore we're going to clearly say this is a virtual image for the same reason that we said before, because the light rays don't actually converge. It's a virtual image. We see that it should be upright. And we, sh we see that it should be shorter. It should be smaller in height. And for a diverging lens, this will be consistent with what we expect. Um, so let's go ahead, now that we've drawn the image, let's find the image location and the image height. So looking at the image location in part B, we're going to use the lens equation, 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F. So 1 over 14 plus 1 over DI equals 1 over negative 8. Remember, for a diverging lens, we have to have a negative focal length. And if you solve this for d sub i, you're going to get d sub i is equal to negative 5.09 centimeters. So if we look at the, um, the diagram, is that consistent? Well, it actually is. Because the negative simply means that it's in front of the lens just like the focal length was in front of the lens. So that negative makes sense. And this is smaller in magnitude. 5.09 is smaller than 14. So we see that this is much closer. So in orange here, I'm going to draw the d sub i 
this image distance is much shorter than the object distance d sub o. So that is very much consistent. So we have the image distance now. We know where it's located. The question is, how tall is the image? So to that end, we want to find the image height. So in part C, we use the magnification equation. Magnification is equal to hi over ho, which is negative di over do. And now we can use this part of the equation to solve for hi once again. So hi is equal to ho times negative d sub i over d sub o, or the object height, once again, same object, three centimeters, times negative d sub i, so negative times a negative 5.09 over the object distance was 14. And you see that the two negatives cancel, we get a positive image height. And you can see the ratio 5.09 to 14 uh, is going to produce a magnification less than one. So we're going to have a smaller image here for sure. And if we multiply that by the object height of three centimeters, we're going to get 1.09 centimeters. All right, now let's look at the diagram and see if that's consistent. That is absolutely consistent. If we have an image height here of 1.09 centimeters, it's certainly smaller than the object height of three centimeters. And it's upright exactly as we predicted because it is positive. So the mathematics is consistent with the ray tracing, which is exactly what we want. All right, I hope that was helpful and I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Take care, bye.